Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome back to the Rethinking Cyber podcast with me, your host, Rebecca McLaughlin Easton. Today's topic is addressing the talent gap in cybersecurity and asking why empowering women is key. A recent global joint study by Boston Consulting Group and the Global Cybersecurity Forum points to the world increasingly turning to digital, despite the significant escalation of digital threats. Cybercrime inflicted a trillion-dollar global business loss in 2020 alone. And compounding the danger, 57% of organizations report unfilled cybersecurity positions, while some 75% of today's cybersecurity workers are men highlighting the huge opportunity to expand the numbers and capabilities of the cybersecurity workforce by attracting women to the field. Here to discuss matters with me and take a deep dive into BCG's latest research is Dr. Leila Hatit, the Managing Director and Senior Partner for Boston Consulting Group in Dubai. She'll join me to discuss what can be done to accelerate and ease the process for women looking to enter the field of cybersecurity. Leila is a specialist in human capital topics and is the global lead of BCG's education, employment and welfare sector. Leila, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining me from the UAE today. Hello, Rebecca, and thank you for having me. Leila, let me start by asking you, when it comes to the fast-growing field of cybersecurity and women's participation in it, historically has it always been this way or have the numbers plumbed new lows? And if it is a more recent trend, then what would you point to as a catalyst for it? And what are the barriers preventing more women entering the field? There's a large talent gap in the cybersecurity sector. So while women make up 39% of the overall workforce and 38% of the workers in STEM fields in general, they only make up 25% of the cybersecurity uh, workforce. So it's far from their fair share in that sector. And that sector is one that is fast growing in general and fast growing in terms of talent gap. So you have cybercrime inflicted a trillion dollar global business loss in 2020 alone. You have 57% of organizations who report they have unfilled cybersecurity positions. And the global cybersecurity workforce was short of some 3.5 million workers in 2021, according to cybersecurity ventures. So as demand continues to outstrip supply, this huge talent gap is expanding fast. Between 2020 and 2021, it grew by 13%. So you have on the one hand this talent gap that is significant and growing fast. And you have, on the other hand, women taking a much, much far from their fair share. And the opportunity for women to, to, to fill that talent gap is, is, is huge. What does the field of cybersecurity really stand to gain by being more inclusive to women? Women's participation has always been low in the cybersecurity field. And there are many key barriers that explain this, this low participation in, in the profession. The first one is discrimination. So about 51% of female cybersecurity workers, according to a survey that was run by BCG, have said that they experience some form of discrimination, either in the form of unconscious discrimination, unexplained delays in advancement, exaggerated highlighting of mistakes on the job, tokenism, or some overt, uh, overt discrimination. The second barrier would be gender pay gap. So we see that women are paid much less uh, as compared to men in exactly the same positions in cybersecurity, and that the average pay for women in cybersecurity in North America is about 80K versus an average of 96.5 for men. Um, finally, I would say the key barrier is uh, a key barrier is societal norms and perception. So research and development case studies show that there are systemic, cultural, social and legal barriers that constrain women to fully leverage their potential in this field. So when you ask women to choose uh, what, when, what they're looking at in terms of priorities when choosing a job, they tell you they'd like to contribute to society, they'd like to earn a high salary and they'd like to have a good work life balance. Uh, cybersecurity jobs fill the first two of these priorities, but are known to be to be a career that has poor uh, work-life balance. So that's another area that needs to be worked on. And, and finally, I would say women in cybersecurity are often perceived as nerds or, or hackers. Uh, and it's often seen that cybersecurity is a field which is a, a boys club. And these are all the kinds of barriers or the key barriers that we need to, to, to work on to, uh, to, to solve the issue. What does the field of cybersecurity really stand to gain by being more inclusive to women? 
So the gains, I would say, are on two fronts broadly. The first front is to grow national and global economies. Uh, the cybersecurity field faces a shortage of, shortage of over 3 million workers worldwide. Uh, women in particular are more vulnerable to job losses from automation and from AI. And so encouraging women to pursue careers in cybersecurity strengthens and diversifies the national economies because cybersecurity is a well-paying, highly productive and very importantly, future-proof industry. So that's on the one side. On the other side, for the companies themselves and the organizations themselves, we have research that has proven that this improves business performance. So having gender diverse boards typically have higher returns on assets by eight to 13 basis points. Companies with gender diverse employees are 15% more likely to have financial returns that are above the national industry average. And finally, cybersecurity specifically requires diversity to boost problem solving, innovation, better risk management, so that you can get greater security. From where you sit, what should the priorities be? What needs to be done urgently? What levers can we pull? For example, the educational pipeline, work-life balance, the equality in the workplace. A number of things that need to change, a number of levers that we can pull. If I think about it along the the uh, the, the career or the life uh, of, of a young uh, of a young woman, we need to start by sparking the girl's interest in STEM before or during high school to expand the cybersecurity pipeline. So when we in in the in a BCG survey that we ran with 2,000 uh, women undergraduate students in STEM, uh, they, they told us that 78% uh, of them developed an interest in STEM in middle or high school. So you have to start young. Uh, second, I would say you need to increase access to tertiary education and cybersecurity for women. So you need to make sure that you attract more women into higher education fields re related to cybersecurity. Third, spread awareness for cybersecurity through women role models, through senior industry leaders. Uh, next is to help uh, make cybersecurity roles more balanced and flexible to allow women to have a family in parallel. Um, also, I think debunking stereotypes and negative perception of cybersecurity workers to attract more women to the field so that you know, we don't think of cybersecurity women as nerds or hackers. Um, I would also say more public and private sector organizations focused on women empowerment in cybersecurity need to emerge, particularly in non-Western countries. Today, most of the efforts are concentrated in the US and in Europe, and we need to see that happen really globally across the world. And finally, I would say that companies should also consider hiring non-traditional candidates that are in, in, and recruiting them based on, on attitude and then train them for specific uh, roles in cybersecurity. Maybe they can also think about offering internship or returnships for women, which can also be a way to foster uh, equality. We've spoken about some of the terms and the labels that are sometimes applied to uh, women in this particular sector and industry, but what about the myths that surround women in the cybersecurity field? What would you like to dispel or debunk? There are many myths to debunk in, uh, in term about women in cybersecurity. One is that cybersecurity is not a boys only uh, club, if you will. It's not a technological uh, elitist career. Um, so that's one, one bit to debunk. The second is that women have a lot to offer in a field as, uh, that requires a combination of people, process and technology skills to succeed. Um, you know, we were talking to Betsy Bevilaka, a former head of, of information security program and operations at Facebook, and she told us when people think of cybersecurity, they, they imagine a guy in a hoodie sitting in front of a computer in his parents' basement and breaking into, into systems. And this, uh, this uh, uh, myth, if you want, has been, or stereotype has been going on for, for decades almost when you think about cybersecurity. And so debunking stereotypes and negative perceptions of cybersecurity workers is going to be necessary uh, to attract more women to the field. What are some of the key recent achievements that have really facilitated female empowerment within this industry? And what would be interesting or important milestones to strive for in the years ahead? There's been quite a bit of progress for women in cybersecurity. So women are more aware of cybersecurity. We, when our, in our survey, 82% uh, 80, of survey respondents said that they had some or a lot of knowledge of cybersecurity. This was a worldwide survey of 2,000 women studying STEM. They are also getting more access to cyber security education. So our survey revealed that 58% of respondents said they had access to cyber security education. And actually 68% had already taken at least one cyber security related course. More women are entering cybersecurity. So the participation of women in cybersecurity actually doubled uh, from 2017 to 2020, according to ISC research. And women working in cybersecurity tend to have more advanced education, which positions them well for a senior uh, leadership position uh, in the future. 
Finally, the cybersecurity compensation gap is narrowing amongst the younger generation. So all of that bodes well, but the progress is not fast enough. And so the key milestones ahead are uh, we need more mentors and sponsors. This is crucial for advancing women to senior leadership roles in cybersecurity and helping them advance and navigate in the industry overall to build the business acumen. And it's very hard to find women who can serve as mentors and sponsors at this senior stage in, in that field. So we need a lot of male champions as well. Um, we were talking to Angela Bray Hayes, uh, former vice president at Lockheed Martin, and she was saying, you know, I pushed against the 24-7 culture in security operations center, and I showed that it's not necessary for cybersecurity resilience. So all these drawbacks, these myths need to be uh, broken. And it's, when you have uh, champions at the top that are willing to push and break them, uh, you, you can make a big difference. Companies need to commit and be accountable to fostering psychological safety and gender-friendly workplace. So creating women's networks can help with that, but more generally policies and change of, of culture and mindset is gonna be critical. Finally, I would say some women will leave or suspend their careers because of expectations that they need to take care of the family. And so we need to push uh, measures such as uh, returnship programs to encourage women to come back uh, after having thing, taken a break to, to, to raise their, their, their family. So these family-friendly policies, equal and paid parental leave, on-site childcare, all of these things will, will help. That's at the company level. And then at society level at large, we have to address the larger, the stickier issue of redistributing unpaid care and household work if we want success, success for women empowerment overall, but also in STEM jobs and in cybersecurity. Leila, if you were able to speak directly to governments, to the private sector, to civil societies, to the wider community of actors steadfastly working to really close that gender gap in cybersecurity, what would you say to them? If I were to speak directly to governments and the private sector and civil society, as well as the wider community, I'd say, you know, in, in, in a nutshell, you need to consider both agency and access related barriers across the entire career education and career life cycle. Um, and uh, this could result in a broad range of constructive changes. At the one end of the spectrum, it's about planning and implementing the right policies. At the other end, in the, ho in the home, it's about resolving with a partner to redistribute the household and care work. Most of the stakeholders have a national and or regional scope. Most of them are nonprofit and most of them are concentrated in the US and Europe. So we need a much broader range of, of uh, uh, players uh, across the world from the private sector, civil society, government uh, in, in uh, non-Western countries who are pushing for this, who are working for this in tandem. Uh, the data, just basic data on women in cybersecurity in non-Western countries uh, is lacking. Uh, so, and, and finally, the numerous initiatives that are happening today are still siloed, are still uh, redundant. So we need to make sure that they are working together in an integrated way and in a way that is complementary. Let me ask you, what would your advice be to young women who are considering a job or a career in the field of cybersecurity, but just don't see themselves represented at present? What would you tell them? So I would give them a couple of advice. The first one is that cybersecurity is not a wholly technical field. Um, women have a lot to offer in a field that requires a combination of people, process, and technology skills to, to succeed. And the second very important advice is you are not an imposter. Um, so women who work in fields that are predominantly uh, dominated by, by, by men uh, can suffer from a low sense of belonging and from this imposter syndrome, but they need to know that they belong, that they deserve to be there because they have the requisite capabilities, they have the track record of accomplishments, so it's important to fight uh, this imposter uh, syndrome. Lastly, Leila, let me ask you about the role of the Global Cybersecurity Forum in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. What do you see as its role when it comes to empowering women in cybersecurity? I think today there is a clear opportunity for an inaugural international initiative on women's empowerment in cybersecurity that covers the entire career life cycle holistically and connects existing stakeholders and activities to share best practices, to pool resources. So the forum's Women Empowerment and Cybersecurity Initiative can meet this need by bringing together decision makers and thought leaders from across the world and encouraging a healthy debate to address the issue. And there we sadly have to leave our conversation, Leila, but thank you for joining me. Thank you for your insights and, of course, the research. If people want more information about it, where should they head to? Thank you, Rebecca. They can find our, our report on bcg.com.
And it just remains for me to thank you, the viewers and the listeners who have joined me from right around the world. Do stay tuned for more episodes of the Rethinking Cyber podcast. And you can find them on Apple, Spotify, YouTube and wherever you normally access your podcasts from. I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care and goodbye.